Hey everybody, every now and then we encounter some miniatures that are absolutely overflowing with character and imagination, and that's certainly the case here because we've been looking at a range of miniatures for an upcoming game called Gravedigger, which is made by a small independent studio called Waits in Graves. Now at the moment there's just a few figures available for this range, but they are amazing and every one of them is really, really cool. But what we've done is picked out one that we think is our favourite, and this one's called a Bahali Paladin. And she's something that we think that you haven't really seen before. There's lots of very unique parts about this model. Not least because she's not alone, she's accompanied by a strange creature that looks kind of like a rat-dog hybrid thing called a Mute Threader. Now these figures are amazing, we can't wait to paint them. We hope you enjoy this video and we'll see you at the desk. To paint these miniatures, once you finish building them, the first thing you need to do is to undercoat them. And for these two models, you can see I've gone for some very different colours because they have very different colour schemes. For the Paladin, I've gone for Mechanica Standard Grey, which is a great starting point for all the colours we're going to be using. And for the Mute Threader, I've gone for Wraithbone Spray, which again is a great starting point for the very pale colour scheme that this monster has. Now in addition you'll notice that both miniatures are temporarily glued onto some spare Citadel bases and that's because the Gravedigger bases are actually quite unique and I've got one of them here so you can see it close up. They're almost like a coin and you can see they've got a design on both sides and it's actually a metal coating as well. And well I don't want any chance of any paint getting onto these so that's why I'm going to paint the miniature separate to them and at the end I can just glue them on. They've only been very lightly glued with a little bit of super glue onto those temporary bases so they'll be nice and easy to remove. But with that done, what we're going to do is start out by painting the Paladin. And for this, the first colour we need is a dark, kind of cold brown for all the leather on the miniature, of which there's quite a bit. So I'm going to use some dried bark for this. And to apply it, go for a larger brush. And I'm going to be using my regiment brush for it so I can cover a large area quickly. And with this, all you got to do is get that paint ready on your palette as ever, thin down with a touch of water. And then it's just a matter of blocking in anything that you want to be this darker leather colour. And I'm going to be starting out with the coat, which you can see around here. But in addition, there's some smaller areas of leather to look out for as well. For example, joints in the armour, such as the one just here. Also the boots and the gloves. Basically anything you want to be a brown leather, block in at this stage. I've finished blocking in that dark brown, and now we're going to move on to blocking in some other colours, which are all going to be sharing the same wash, which is going to be a dark brown wash. So it makes sense to do them all at the same time, using the same technique as what we've just done. So to begin with, what we need is a light kind of khaki colour for the fur around the collar, and for this I'm going to use some Carrick Stone. And then we're going to move on to another shade of brown, which is going to be for the skirt, and for this Gawthor Brown is a great choice. Finally, for a yellow sash, what we're going to do is base coat that with some Avalan Sunset. But first of all, what we need is Carrick Stone, and to apply this I'm going to be once again using that regiment brush because the technique is just the same as what we did in the previous step. So like before, make sure you paint thin down on your palette, and once you've done so, it's just a matter of painting in all the fur. So we're looking at this texture around here, just be really careful when you get close to that dark brown such as the hood in there. Now the fur's done, we can move on to the skirt. And for this, what we need is a lighter brown than what we had for the coat. So I'm going to be using some Gawthor Brown, just blocked in just in the same way as we did with the other colours. And finally, using Avalan Sunset, we're then ready to base coat in the sash around the waist. With those colours blocked in, we can now move on to applying our first wash into the miniature because all these colours can be washed in one go. And for this, what we need is a dark brown wash. I'm going to use some Agrax Earthshade from Citadel, but if you want to go for the Army Painter, then Strong Tone is the colour to use here. And to apply it, what you need is a good large brush to put on lots at once. So I'm using a monster brush here from the Army Painter. And to get this ready, I like to use a regular palette just to control how much I'm putting on at once. But if you're feeling a little bit braver, you can go straight from the pot if you prefer. Whatever you choose, once you've got a good amount of this on your brush, all you've got to do is start applying it over the colours that we've painted on so far. Now at this stage, don't worry about anything else. Just make sure you get it over those areas so it settles nicely in the recessed detail there like that. And once you've done so, leave it for around about half an hour to dry. Once that wash is completely dry, we now have a great opportunity to finish off the fur on the miniature because for this, dry brushing is the perfect technique because there's lots of lovely texture on there to really bring out. And if we do it now, we can neaten up as we paint in the details around it. So this is a great opportunity for it. Now for this, we're going to do two dry brushes. First of all, using a shabty bone to really highlight everything, and then with a very small amount of pallid witch flesh, just to finish it off and just pick out some of the fur. But first of all, we need a shabty bone, and to apply it, I've gone for a hobby dry brush here from the Army Painter. A good small size for the kind of detail that we're doing. 
And with this, you just need to get a small amount on your brush, then get some tissue and use it to work the paint into the bristles and to get rid of the excess as well until there's not very much left on there. And once you've got that on the tissue and you can see it's not leaving much behind, you're then ready to start applying it to the model. And to do this, what you need to do is go across the texture. So we don't want to go kind of up and down like that so the bristles fall into the recesses. Instead, go sideways like this, just slowly building it up so that paint only catches the raised details. With that done, we're then ready to move on to Pallid Witch Flesh. Again, dry brushed on using the same technique, but this time just focusing it towards the top of the fur, so just kind of around the shoulders along here. And there we are, the fur is now complete, and you can see it has caught some of the surrounding leather, but that's not a problem because now we're going to move on to finishing off all that detail by doing a bit of layering on it first of all. Now, because the coat is such a large feature in the miniature, we're going to go a little bit further with this. So first of all, what we're going to do is layer it by making a mix, and this is going to be dried bark and Gawthor Brown together. Now after that we can then move on to highlighting and for this we'll just need Gawthor Brown on its own and this can also be for the skirt too. And to finish all these details off what we need is a little bit of Bane Blade Brown. But first of all I'm going to make that mix and to do so I'm going to be using the Regiment brush once more. And for this what we want to do is create a roughly 50-50 mix here. So I'm going to start out with some dried bark and then what we need is a little bit of Gawthor Brown as well. So roughly the same. Now having the wet palette here is a really big advantage because this paint's going to remain usable for quite a long time so great for this sort of thing. And with it, what we can do is just take our time creating the kind of tone of what we want here. And we're looking for something a little bit lighter than what we've got with dried bark just there. So you see by keeping that on the palette, I can create my mix to the side of it. So I can use it as kind of like a waypoint to work out the kind of tone I want. And it's looking kind of like that is what I'm going for. So with that mix, what we can do then is just get it ready to apply. So just a touch of water to thin it down and then just make sure there's not too much of this paint on the brush. And with this, what we're looking to do is to apply it to the raised flatter areas on the coat and avoid the recesses. So for example, on these creases at the back just here, what I'm gonna do is start applying it to this raised area along here, then part way down this side here, but not going all the way into the deepest recess, instead just leaving that darker there like that to really emphasize the shape and texture of the leather. Once you finish the layering on the coat, you're then ready to move on to using just Gawthor Brown on its own this time. And to start out with this, we need to layer the skirt. So just like before, look for the flat raised areas and just apply a thin coat of this onto those parts whilst avoiding the recesses and leaving them darker. Now in addition with this color, we can start highlighting the coat. And for this, what we need to do is look for the tops of the creases of it. So for example, you can see these creases just here where it peaks. What I'm gonna do is just very carefully follow the raised area just like that using the tip of the brush just to follow it down just to help that detail stand out a little bit more. I finished applying the Gawthor Brown and I just want to quickly point out too, I also used it on the gloves and the boots to highlight those details. And with that done, we can now move on to Bane Blade Brown. Now this is going to be a highlight on the skirt like we did in the previous step on the coat. So looking for the tops of the creases and just gently picking them out. And for this, I'm now using a small airbrush from Citadel for a finer point and a bit more control. Because in addition to the highlight here, we also need to do a fine highlight on the coat. And with this, it's just a matter of looking for the creases that stand out the most. For example, these ones just up here around the waist and just gently picking them out with a small out of this color just to finish those details off. And with that, all of that leather detail is now complete and we can move on to finishing off that sash. And for this, first of all, what we need to do is to layer it with some Uriel yellow to make it brighter and to finish it off with a highlight, phalanx yellow is a perfect color. But first of all, we need Uriel yellow and to apply it, I'm gonna be going straight to that small airbrush now because this detail is so small. And using this, again, just make sure your paint's thin down and ready. And once you've done so, you're then ready to start applying it to the sash. And like when we were layering earlier on, what we're looking to do is to avoid the deeper recesses and just paint it onto the flat raised areas, for example in the knot just around there like that. Once you finish the layer, you're then ready to move on to Phalanx Yellow applied as a highlight onto the sash. And for this, we're just looking for the tops of the creases and just gently picking them out. 
And with that, the sash is now complete as well. And we can move on to the next step, which is to paint in all that plate armor and also the blade, which is called a nail blade. And of course looks like a giant pair of scissors. And for this, what we need to do is base coat all of this with a medium silver. So for this iron hand steel is a perfect color. After that, we need to wash it with a black. And for this, I'm gonna use some norm oil before returning to iron hand steel to layer the nail blade. And then finally to highlight all the silver, what we need is some storm host silver. But first of all, I'm going to be using iron hand steel to base coat it. And to begin with, I've actually got my small layer brush on hand, but it's a good idea to have a larger one, for some of the larger, more open areas that are easy to access. But a small brush like this is perfect initially because some of this detail can be quite tricky to get to now, especially with all these parts that we've completed so far. So for this, you see, I've got lots of control as I'm base coating the breastplate around here, just being really careful as I get close to that coat. But for this, what we're looking at painting is all the breastplate around here and also the greaves down here, some bits on the boots and the nail blade itself as well. With all that silver now base coated, you're then ready to apply a black wash over the top of it. And for this, I'm using some Nuln Oil. And with this wash, we need to be much more careful than the previous time we we're applying wash. So you can see now I'm using a regiment brush just to keep it under control, carefully only applying it over those silver details. Once our wash is dry, we're then ready to return to iron hand steel. And this is going to be a layer on the nail blade only. And the main reason for this is to separate it from the armor plating by making it much shinier and cleaner. And with this, what we want to do is apply a thin layer of it onto all these flatter areas, again, looking for those recesses and avoiding them. And that includes these recesses we've got on the blade where you can see there's like little chips in it. As you get close to those, just be really careful and go up to them, but don't go quite into them. And finally, we're ready to move on to Stormhost Silver to apply a highlight to all this silver detail. And for this, I switched to my small layer brush and using this wherever possible, I'm gonna be making use of the side of the brush like this to get a sharp highlight appearing on those edges. And it's just a matter of turning the model as you need to so that you keep comfortable and can access those corners. And with that, that silver is now complete and we can move on to base coating the final details on this particular miniature. And to start out with for this, what we need to do is base coat the skin. And for this, I'm gonna use some Cadian Flesh Tone. Then after that, we're gonna base coat some golden details in the miniature using Retributor Armor. Finally, it's time to base coat the hair. And for this miniature, I'm gonna go for some quite bright red, almost anime-like hair. And so for this, I'm gonna base coat it using some Wazdaka Red. But first of all, we need to base coat the skin. So it's Cadian Flesh Tone and to apply it, I'm gonna be using the Regiment Brush. And for this, Again, it's just a matter of getting that paint ready. And once it's thinned down, it's just a matter of blocking the skin in. And whilst doing this, just a matter of being careful around the collar and also the eye patch as well. Next, we're ready to base coat some gold detail using Retributor Armor. And for this, I'm using a small layer brush because all these details are quite small. But even then, what I'm looking for is the large areas that are going to be gold. So for example, the trim around this little detail we've got here on the blade. And also I'm gonna do the detail around this kind of little node we've got on the breastplate, so up around here. Now later on, we're gonna add some finer gold detail, but it's so fine that it doesn't really need this base coat. So just concentrate on these kind of slightly larger areas like this. And finally, we're ready to base coat the hair using Wazdaka Red. With those colors now blocked in, we can wash them too. And for these, what we need is a kind of warm reddish brown color to give them some life and some warmth. And so for this, Reichland Flesh Shade is the perfect choice. And to apply it, I'm gonna be starting out with that regiment brush, but it's a good idea to have a smaller one on hand for that gold detail. So use like a detail brush for that or something. But for this, what we need to do is just use a palette to get some of this ready so we can control how much is going on at once. And once you've done so, it's just a matter of painting this over the gold detail, the skin and the hair. Once the wash is dry, we can then move on to highlighting these details. And to begin with, what we're gonna do is highlight all that gold because there's some quite fine detail we can pick out with it at this stage. For this, what we need is a pale gold color and I'm gonna use some Liberator Gold for it. And to apply it, I'm going to that small layer brush from Citadel. 
And with this, what I'm looking to do is to highlight, like we have been doing with the armor on the gold details that we base coated so far, but we can also use this color to pick out some further details. To begin with though, we've got those, that gold part that we base coated, for example, on the blade just down here. I just want to look for the edges and just gently pick them out to give it a bit of definition there like that. Same with the gold on here, but in addition, you can see these bands on the armor. What we can do to embellish them a little bit more is using the side of the brush, just gently skim along them like that, just to pick them out with gold to make it look a little bit more decorative. And with that, the gold is now complete and we can now move on to finishing off the head. And for this, what we need to do is first of all, layer her skin using some Cadian flesh tone and then to highlight it using a little bit of Kislev flesh. And with that done, we then need to pick out the lower lip. And for this, we need a darker flesh tone. So Bugman's Glow is great for this. And then finally to highlight the hair, all we need is some Tuscor fur. But first of all, what we need is Cadian flesh tone and to apply it, I'm gonna be using a small layer brush. And what we want to do with this is just pick out those raised areas whilst retaining the definition that we got from the wash earlier on. So it's about precision this. So definitely make sure you've got your paint under control in your palette, just thinning it down as you need to. Not too much though, so that it doesn't run out of control. Kind of looking for it to flow off the brush there like that. Once you reach that point, it's just a matter of layering onto the skin. And again, just looking for those recesses and carefully avoiding them. So for example, just starting on the nose, gently picking out the bridge of it there like that, and then working your way onto the cheeks, working your way down to the chin, very carefully like this. Next, we can move on to Kislev Flesh to apply a highlight to the skin. And with this, we're looking to pick out the most defined features. So for example, once again, down the center of the nose there like that, and along the upper lip, so very carefully along there. And then we're looking to pick out the cheekbones as well. And for this, it's just a matter of just very gently going down the side there like that. Next up, we're ready to add a very small amount of Bugman's Glow onto the lower lip. And for this, you just need to paint a fine line of it just along the middle, very gently there. And finally, all we need is some Tuscore fur to highlight the hair. And with this, all we're looking to do is to look for some raised strands and just gently pick them out. And with that, the Paladin is now complete and we can move on to painting the Mute Threader. And for this, remember, we started out with an undercoat of Wraithbone. And now what we're gonna do is apply some contrast paint over the top of it, start to bring out some definition in the fur and all the various details on it. Now for this, Skeleton Horde is the best choice for it to give that slightly sepia tone to it. But because we're gonna do multiple coats of this to control how strong the color gets in certain areas, painting it on straight out the pot is gonna to give too strong a color. So we need to dilute it. And for this, we're gonna use some contrast medium to ensure it dries in the same way, so it's nice and smooth. Now to get the mix ready, what we're going to do is go for a roughly 50-50 mix on the palette. So I've got a monster brush just here from the Army Painter, and I'm going to start out with Skeleton Horde. It's going to build up a little puddle of it on the palette. So that's one and two brushfuls there, and I'll go for a third for good measure. There we go. And once you've got that on the palette, you can then start diluting it using the medium. Now I'm doing it this way around just so you can see what I'm doing really. Um, but what I'm looking for is a roughly equal amount. If you're not sure, err on the side of caution and have more medium in than you think you're going to need because you can always do a really diluted coat of this afterwards if you want to. But it's going to get together on the palette there like that and then start bringing them together. And we're looking for a diluted version of the paint that's kind of like this here, this sort of consistency. And once you've got that, all you've got to do is start applying it all over the mute threader. And remember with that contrast paint, it's a case of picking a starting point, for example, one of the legs down here and starting on this point and just working your way around the entire miniature, just letting it settle at uh, this sort of consistency. Once that first coat is dry, we're then gonna go back to apply a second coat with the same mix as before, but this time focused on areas that we want to be a little bit darker. So in this case, it's going to be around the chest and on the underside. So kind of painting onto that area just there, then bringing it underneath the body as well like that, and then on the inside of the legs too. So around there, for example. Now, in addition, we can also add a bit more depth on the head by painting it into the ears too. So just apply a little bit more into this recess here.
Once that second coat is dry as well, we can then move on to laying in the next bit of color on the miniature, which is going to be more of a flesh kind of color on the, well, the feet and the hands almost, and also its tail as well. Now to do this, we're gonna be doing a similar technique to what we've just been using, using contrast paint diluted with contrast medium, only this time it's Gullum and Flesh. So Gullum and Flesh and contrast medium. Now, like before, we're gonna make a roughly 50-50 mix of this using that monster brush again. So starting out with some of the Gullum and Flesh, just get a small amount there on the palette, and then, roughly equal amount of contrast medium. And like before, if you're not sure on the ratio, have a bit more medium than you think you might need. So I'm just gonna get a bit there and just get a bit more for good measure. There we go, and then mix them together. And so as before, we're looking for a diluted version of this color. So kind of like that there. Now once you've got that, it's just a matter of picking one limb at a time and the tail as well. And what you do is just apply it towards the bottom of it. So kind of around the almost hand that we've got there. Just paint it over that part like that to change the tone of it subtly like that. And then once you've done the whole area, so all the way around there, whilst it's still wet, quickly wash your brush, make sure it's just damp and use it just to bring the color up a little bit further up the limb so it fades into it there like that. Once that's dry, apply a second coat using the exact same mix as before, once again onto the ends of the limbs and on the tail just to get a stronger color but retain that smooth transition from one color to the next. And with that second coat now dry as well, you can see we've got a nice gradient between those colors and we can move on to highlighting it. And to do this for the fur, dry brushing is the perfect technique to use because of all the texture on there. And for this, we need two colors. First of all, we're gonna use some Wraith Bone and then after that, we need a pure white. And for this, I'm gonna use some matte white from the Army Painter. But first of all, we need Wraith Bone and to apply it, I'm going to be using a smaller dry brush. This is the Hobby Dry Brush here from the Army Painter. And with this, you just need a small amount on your brush, work it into the bristles on some tissue until there's hardly any left on there. And then with this, what we need to do is build up a very soft dry brush, so slowly building up the color. So to apply it, what you do is just be sure to apply the brush in the direction going across the fur. So don't go so the bristles fall between it, kind of go this way and just slowly build it up like this so the color gets stronger and stronger to get that texture to start to stand out. Once that's done, you're then ready to move on to another dry brush, this time using matte white as a lighter highlight just to finish off the fur. And once again, it's just a matter of lightly dry brushing this all across the back of the monster and its head as well. And with that, the fur is now standing out nicely and we can move on to doing a final highlight on this white. Still using matte white from the Army Painter here, but this time I'm going to be applying it with the small layer brush because for this, what I want to do is just add a final highlight to some of these details, particularly on the face, just to give them a bit of sharpness and finish them off. So for this, you don't need very much of it. Just make sure you've got a small amount there on your brush and using this, we just need to pick out defined features on its head. So things like wrinkles, scars, that kind of thing. So you can see it's got this scar just down here. All I'm going to do is just carefully go along the edge there like that to give a bit of definition to it with a finer, sharper highlight. And the same on these ridges along here as well. Now that detail on the face is highlighted, we can move on to finishing off the fleshy parts on the ends of the limbs and also on the tail. And for this, what we need to do first of all is layer these details using some Kislev flesh. And to highlight them, we just need a small amount of a shabty bone. First though, with Kislev flesh, I'm going to be layering it using the um, regiment brush. And with this, we just want a small amount. And for this, it's just a matter of applying it very thinly onto these details because we've got the right sort of color already from the contrast paint, but we just need to smooth it out and give it a little bit more sharpness. So you can see I'm diluting this a fair amount there like that, so it's quite see-through. And with this, all you've got to do then is start painting it onto these parts. And we're just looking to avoid those recesses where it's darker, just applying it thinly on these flatter areas, such as just around there. And then finally, we're ready to highlight these details with some of Shabti Bone. And using this, we just need to pick out any details that stand out, for example, the tendons just along here. And there we are, that flesh is now complete as well, and we can move into the final details in this miniature around its face. And for this, first of all, what we need to do is to base coat all the gums and the tongue using some Screamer Pink, and then pick out all the teeth using Zandri Dust. Finally, we're then ready to move on to Corvus Black, and this is for a number of little black details around its face. But first of all, what we need is Screamer Pink, and with this, I'm gonna start out straight away with that small layer brush because you need to be careful now because the detail here is quite intricate. So as ever, make sure the paint's thinned down correctly on your palette so that you've got lots of control over it. And once you've done so, it's just a matter of base coating these areas. So what we're looking for here is the tongue and the gums, which you can see all around here. So just be as neat as you can when you get close to that white fur as you're doing this part.
And there we are, the inside of the mouth is now blocked in, and with all that tricky to reach detail done, we can start picking out the teeth which are over the top of it. And for this, we just need some Zandri dust. All we've got to do is just pick out each tooth very carefully like this. And then finally, we're ready to move on to Corvus Black for a few details on it. And to begin with, what we need to do here is the nose, which is the entire part of it, so all the way down to the flesh just there. But in addition, what we need to do is to paint this into a few other details too. To begin with, we need to paint the entirety of the eyes, so just very gently just run the colour into the whole eye socket there like that. And the inside of the ears too, so along there. And then finally, we also need to do the lips, which are peeled back here, you see? So it's this kind of raised detail we've got running alongside the mouth. So for this, just use the side of your brush, just very gently run along like this. As you can see, this gives a really nice contrast against that white fur, but do take your time with it, so avoid making any mistakes when you get close to those fur details. And with those colours blocked in, we've now got a really creepy looking mouth on there. And what we need to do now is to shade all these colours. And what we can do is shade them all at the same time with one colour. Agrax Earth Shade is the one to go for this. Now to apply it, I'm going to be sticking to that small layer brush because we need to be careful not to get it onto that white fur. So just make sure you use a palette as well. Make sure your brush isn't overloaded with too much at once. But once you've got it ready, all you've got to do is paint it over these new colours. So this is going to be all the detail inside the mouth and also the ears, eyes and nose. Once that wash is dry, we're then ready to move on to highlighting these details to finish the model off. And for this, first of all, what we need is some pink horror to highlight the tongue, and then we're going to move on to Mechanica Standard Grey to highlight the various black details on there. After that, for the teeth, we need a shabty bone, and then finally, we just need to return to matte white, and this is going to be for the eyes. But first of all, what we need is some pink horror, and again, it's a case of going for your small brush. So I'm back to my small layer brush here. And with this, it's just a matter of picking out the tip of the tongue where the detail is the sharpest. So you don't need very much, really. But just make sure you've got it on your brush nicely thinned down with that fine tip there. And with this, what we're looking for is just that final detail on the end there. So you can see where it's sharp at the end of the tongue. Just very carefully use this to pick that out. With the tongue done, we can now move on to Mechanica Standard Grey for the black detail. And for this, we just need to highlight the nose by just very gently catching that edge that runs along there. And also using the side of your brush, just highlight along the edge of the lips as well. With that done, we're then ready to move on to a shabty bone to highlight the teeth. And for this, all we need is a small amount of this colour towards the end of each tooth. And finally, we just need some matte white to paint the insides of the eyes. And this is still using the small layer brush. And with this, what we need to do is to layer it into the centre, leaving just a small amount of that black showing around the outside. And to get a solid finish, apply this as two thin coats. Now with this done, you're then ready to move on to applying the miniatures onto the bases. And with these figures, definitely use super glue for that. But once you've got them glued on, your models are complete. Here we have the completed Bahali Paladin, accompanied by her mute threader. And there we are. Now we really hope you enjoyed taking a look at this absolutely unique pair of miniatures. And if you are interested in the Gravedigger range, there are more miniatures available like this, and they're all absolutely amazing as well. Now always remember, if you're looking for a unique painting project, there are lots of small independent studios like this out there, and they're all offering some incredible miniatures, so be sure to seek them out and lend them your support. Anyway, we hope you enjoyed this video, and we'll see you again very soon.